Last week, uh, I was trying something a little bit different, see if it worked, and it was a little bit more of a distraction than a help. So I'm going to go back to this format unless we can find something else. I'm always trying to find a way to try and make things a little bit easier in the presentation process. And that's so one reason why I, I do this, because I know that uh, uh, visual helps with the learning. And so, but if you have your Bibles, open to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, it will be started in verse 16, and I'll have it on the screen here in just a moment. Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, starting with verse 16 through 23, and it reads as follows. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understand it not, then comes the wicked one, and catches away. Uh, that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside, but he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that hears the word, and anon with joy receives it. Yet hath, hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while, for when the tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that hears the word and cares for it, uh, care, and the care of this world. And the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. But he that received the seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth, which also beareth fruit and brings forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Just to give you a little bit of a review. Of what we found in scriptures, this is some of the things that scriptures teaches us. That the seed here that we've been talking about in this passage is the word of God. God's word is the seed that was that's, that's being that's cast out. Christ sows the good seed, and Satan immediately snatches, tries to take away the benefits of the good seed, and he sows um, the seeds of his own, he sows tares. So Satan tries to imitate Christ. Satan tries to imitate Christ by casting out seeds too, but it's, it's bad seed. It's, it's the tares, not the wheat. The world is the field. The seed is being cast out into the field, which is the world. God loves the world. For God so loved the world, we see in John three sixteen. Sin and death enters into the world because of what Adam and Eve had had done, and we continue on with that today. We sin in our own nature, but Christ is the light of the world. And we are to be in the world, but not of the world. It's one thing to be in the world. It's another thing to be of the world, to, to do the things that the world does. Do not love the things of the world, the scriptures tells us, things such as the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. We need to go into the world and share the gospel, the gospel message of salvation. We start with our hometown, those around us, and then we spread out to the communities. From Owsley County, we go to Lee County and Estill County and to other counties. And then eventually we go into the uttermost parts of the world. We go to other states, other countries, across the seas. As we reach out to the world, we see that there are four types of soil that were, are mentioned here in this passage. Four types of soil. The four types are the wayside, the stony places, uh, the thorns and the weeds, and the good soil. The soil here is the heart of mankind. Matthew chapter 13, verse 19, which we read this morning. Matthew 13, 19 also tells us that when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and understands it not, then comes a wicked one, which is Satan, and catches away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. Now the wayside are 
Um, the fields were bordered with paths around them back in, back in the, the Bible days. They would have paths that were pressed down hard. If, if you walk on a path for very long, the grass quits growing, the ground gets harder, and that's what these um, waysides are. That's where the foot traffic is, where the sun bakes down. And when anyone hears the gospel message and they don't understand, then Satan comes immediately. He takes away the, wor the word that was sown in their heart so that they should not be able to, to understand or be saved. As previously seen in, in verse 19, uh, the word catches away My screen is kind of messed up there. It's, it's helps. Help it I'm sorry. Catches away means to take for oneself by force. Uh, the Greek word harpazo means to seize, to pluck, to pull, to take by force. It's a, a derivation of another word pronounced hermonia, or heriomia, I'm sorry, which means to take for oneself. And that's what Satan does. He takes it. He steals it to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The thief comes not but for to steal. You see this in John chapter 10, verse 10. And to kill and to destroy. Jesus Christ said that I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Another type of field that we see is the stony places. Very shallow soil at the top with a layer of bedrock on it. From the top, it, it could look fertile, um, but there's no depth. There's no way for it to sustain the root and to, to, to keep uh, growth. Uh, it doesn't reach the water systems. Uh, this represents one who hears the word and receives it with joy. Matthew chapter 13, verse 20 says, But he that receives the seed into stony places, the same as he that hears the word, and a nun with joy receives it. The same Greek word for joy that's used in this passage here in Matthew um, is also used in Luke chapter 8, and it's also used for the word gladness in, in the, the book of Mark. It means a calm delight. Joy here means a calm delight. They are delighted to hear the gospel, but the delight does not stay strong. It has no root in himself. but endures, believes for a while, but when tribulation or persecution arises, because of the word, by and by, he's offended and he falls away. Now, there's many people that will hear the word of God. They'll act like they're Christians. They'll have the, the Christianese language. But then, after a while, something happens. They get offended and they, they leave. That's the, this right here. It has, they have no root. Matthew 13, 21 says, Yet he hath no root in himself, but doeth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, word of God, by and by he is offended, and then he falls away until he feels comfortable to come back for another season, and then falls away again. The third section we see here is thorns. Here's the, to show you that the that the stony ground is shallow. Um, there's not much to it. So, but the thorns still have those technical errors. <laughs> All right. Maybe I can teach Joseph how to set some of this up. <laughs> He'd be a good help. I know John would love to do it, but he's not here. It's here. We're on the thorns, okay? The weeds, the roots of which we uh, were still in the ground after plowing, after the plowing's been done, this is where the thorns come from. When I was 13 years old, I, I helped a farmer remove weeds from his field. It was technically my first job um, in the workforce, was uh, taking out like if we were in a bean field, if there was a corn stalk left over from the previous season, we would pull the corn stalk out so that the one corn wouldn't take away uh, the nutrition from the beans. If there were weeds in there, 
pull the weeds out. We had a bunch of these things called milkweeds, where the, if you break it open, it was really milky. And he had to pull those out so that they didn't absorb all the nutrients from the soil and all the, all the water and everything so that the beans could grow. So we grabbed these weeds and we would grab them as close to the ground as possible to get as much of the roots out and to keep them from breaking off because if, if they break off, the roots are still there and they'll just keep growing. We didn't want the root to, root to keep growing among the, among the crops there. Weeds, as I mentioned, they stole the nutrients, so they stole the water from the soil, and the weeds then would start to die and wither and fade away. Or the, the plants would. If weeds were not removed, then nearby plants would, they, they would shrivel, they fade, wouldn't develop fully. And by doing this, we helped the farmer so that he could get a, a good crop to help take care of his family. And in return, by doing so, we would get a little income as well. And uh, so it was a win-win-win situation. But we wanted to get that stuff out of the ground so that the crops could grow. So the thorns, here's the word. Those are the ones that hear the word. But the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the loss of the other things such as pleasure of this life, they enter enter into the individual. Choking out the word, they become unfruitful. They bring no fruit to perfection. They don't mature. They might hear the word, take a little bit of a sip of it, but they don't mature. The Greek word for perfection in Luke chapter 8, verse 14, talus oreo, that means to be a bearer to completion of to bring it to maturity, basically. Luke 8, 14 says, And that which fell among the thorns are they which, when they heard it, go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and bringeth forth, bringeth no fruit to perfection. There's no content there for them. They're wrapped up in the things of this world. Hebrews 13, 5 tells us to let your conversation be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have, for as he has said, I will never leave thee, nor for safety. Covetousness comes from the Greek word a filler, a gross meaning without covetousness. It's not greedy. It's, uh, there's no greed for, for the filthy lucre. Another way of saying this would be keep your life free from the love of money. James chapter 1 verse 14 tells us, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and, and enticed. Verse 15, then when lust has Conceived, it brings forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2 instructs us to set our mind, our thoughts, on the heavenly things, on the things above, not on things of this earth. It says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. And then we have the good ground. The final one we have is the good ground. That's the ground that, that you and I want to be in. So the, those that are in the good ground, they hear the word, they receive the word, and they bring forth good fruit. Hear the word, receive it, bring forth fruit, some 30-fold, the Bible says, some 60, and some 100. Matthew 13, 23 says, But he that receives seed into the good ground is he that hears the word and understands it which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. So, in an honest and a good heart, having heard the word, we keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. Luke 8, 15 says, But that on the, ground, on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bringeth forth fruit with patience. So remember... The heart is the soil, and not necessarily the heart that pumps blood, but the real us, the part of us that, that thinks, that decides, our conscience. The heart is the soil, and, and here we see the good heart hears the word that keep, keeps it and brings forth good fruit. And speaking of hearing, who has ears to hear, let him hear. Matthew 13, 9 tells us this. Who has ears to hear, let him hear. How shall the world hear, though? 
unless someone tells them. Romans 10, 14 says, How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. You know, as, as a child of God, you and I, we all are missionaries. Whether if, if that's our job as, as, as a title of a missionary, or if it's just the way that we live, uh, we all are missionaries. God uses us to share his light to those around us. It can be our family. It can be our friends. It can be neighbors. It can be those that we meet in the store. Whoever it is, we're missionaries. And as we have taken the word and we receive it and we bring forth good fruit and, and we hear the word, and we share the word so that that seed can be planted on more soil so that others can come to know Christ. In conclusion here, I'd like to to say that there are various kinds of soil, and our responsibility is to share this good news. Whether we be part of the planting or the watering, we're reminded by the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 that not everyone has the same task, but everyone works together for the glory of God that will receive their own reward. Some will plant, as we see here in 1 Colossians 3, 6, 9, he says, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither is he that watereth, but God gives the increase. So basically what he's saying here, we do what we're supposed to do, and we don't get the glory for it, but God does. God's the one that gives the increase. Now he, it says in verse 8, Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. You Ye are God's building. Those who plant or water have different responsibilities. But there's one task, and that is to bring God glory, obeying his instructions. The ultimate result of sharing God's message is up to, to God. That's up to him how it matures in the soil or in the heart in which it's been placed. For God is the one who gives the increase. So there's a challenge here for us, for each and every one of us, from the youngest all the way up to the eldest. The question then is, how can God use us to share his gospel message? Sowing his good seed with others, it's all part of our discipleship process. In our life, as we take, a, take up our cross daily and follow Christ's example, and that's part of our timeline, is discipleship, taking up our cross daily and following the Lord. John 15, 1 through 5, Jesus Christ says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he that take, he taketh away, he prunes it, basically. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit, turns them back. Verse 3 says, Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except that it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, again, this is Christ speaking, and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. And it reminds me of another verse, where Christ, where we're told by the Apostle Paul, I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. Here it says, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me, without Christ, you can do nothing. We can't do anything without the power of God. Let's close in the word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we come before you, as we have looked at the various types of soil, at one point we may have been the rocky or the thorny ground or the hard, broken up ground. But Father, you have softened our heart. You have prepared it to receive the seed, to be watered, to allow the seed to grow in our hearts to the point where we receive the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. And Father, now that we are a child of God, as we are growing, we can only bear fruit as long as we are connected to the vine, Jesus Christ. That's where our lifeline comes from, where our source of nutrients comes from, through his word, through your word. Father, help us to live a life that brings you glory and honor, that others may see your good works in us. 
that they may want to know you more, to draw closer to you, and even receive the gift of salvation. Father, I pray for each and every one here. I just pray for their encouragement today, throughout this week. Continue to protect us all from the, the virus. Um, continue to pray for our nation with the, the results of the election and how we need to be reconnected as, as, a, as, a, as a family in the States. Father, I lift our heavenly family before you, and I just ask your blessings on each and every one. I ask your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, it's good to see you all. And as always, remember, God loves you. I love you. Have a good week. You're welcome. I can't believe how pretty it's been this week. I know it has been so gorgeous. I've been outside all week. My house could look like it too. I know. So next week when it rains, I gotta work in the house. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you know it says in the Bible not to love things on earth. But I love full of these animals and loving well, outside and I don't there's a there's a difference there, and that, that's a very good point. Because we have pets and we we love our animals, um, but it's it's not loving them to the point that they're more important than God. By taking care of them, God would want you to do that. Because being where they are right now, they can't fend for themselves. They don't have you know. So you're taking care of them, and God God appreciates that. But you know, I've always wondered about that. He wants he wants you to to enjoy the nature. He just doesn't want the nature to be more important to you than he is. That, that's basically what it is. The, the, the love that you have for that is not the same for the love that you have for him. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good week. Yeah, you do the same. All right. Thank you. Well, take care, Bossy. Yeah.